This video will demonstrate how you can create a new SharePoint list item every time a Microsoft form response is submitted. And it will also demonstrate how you can add attachments from an MS form response to a SharePoint list item. Let's go ahead and let's get started. All right, now the first thing that we'll do is create our Microsoft form. Now you can see here that I've navigated to MS forms on the web and I'll go ahead and click on new form. Now we'll start off by giving this form a title and a description. Next, we'll start to build out our form questions. Now the first type of question that we'll add is a text question. Now I'll insert my question text and I'll go ahead and make this a required question. Next, I'm going to add another text type question. You can see here I've added my question. And now I'm going to add a choice type question that maps to a choice type field in our SharePoint list. Now it's really important when you're working with these choice type fields that you insert option values that map exactly to the values that will appear in the corresponding column in your list. Now you can see here I've added high, medium, and low as option values, and these are the same values that will appear in my SharePoint list column. Now I've added in an additional choice type column, and now I am going to insert a column that we'll use to identify a person that will map to a person type column in our list. Now for this, I'll go ahead and select text, and you can see here I've added my question that reads who is the sponsor of this project, enter their email address, and then we're going to pass that email address into a person type column in our list. Now the last question that we're going to add to our MS form is a file type question. Now to do this, you wanna click on the more question types dropdown and you wanna select upload file. Then you wanna update your question text. Now you can see here I've added my text that reads, please attach any supporting documentation to this intake form. You can also specify the number of files that can be attached to a submission. Now I'll go ahead and set this to five. And you also have the option to set the single file size limit, and I'll set this to 100 megabytes. Now you can see here that I've gone ahead and filled out this form. Now I'll quickly scroll down. Now you'll see here for the email address, I've input the email address of the individual that I would like to assign this item to in my SharePoint list. And you can also see here that I have attached a file to this form submission. Next, I'll go ahead and click Submit and the form has been submitted. All right, now you can see here that I've navigated to the SharePoint Online site that I want to create my list on. Next, I'll click on Site Contents, and then I'll click on the New dropdown, and I will select List. Now, I'll demonstrate how to create a SharePoint Online list from scratch, so I will select Blank List. Next, you wanna give this list a name and enter a description. And once you're ready to create the list, go ahead and click on the Create button. And you can see here that our list was created. Now you'll notice by default, the list includes one column called Title. Now, if you're interested in learning how to remove this column altogether or how to repurpose it, I do have a tutorial demonstrating how to do that. I've included a link to that tutorial in the description below, or you can click that card in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. And next, we'll go ahead and add the additional columns that we need in this list so that we can pass in our form responses. Now, I'll go ahead and click Add Column, and I'll start off by adding a text type column. So you can see here that's selected, and I'll click Next. Next, I'll go ahead and fill out the Create a Column menu. Now you can see here I've put in my column name and description and I've set this column to multiple lines of text. Next, I'll go ahead and click Save. And you can see here our column was added. I'll go ahead and click on the Add Column button again. And this time we'll build out our choice type columns. So I'll go ahead and click Choice. And then Next. Now you can see here I've input my column name and description. And next I'll go ahead and add in our choice values. Now to do that, just place your cursor in the choices field and type in the value. Now it's really important to note again that the choice values you enter here have to map exactly to what was found in the corresponding choice fields on your MS form. Now I will also just change the color of this choice to red. 
And to add in additional values, you just want to click on the add choice button, and then you can add as many values as you'd like. Next, I'll go ahead and click save. And you can see here our complexity column has been created. All right, next I'm going to add a person type column. So I'll go ahead and click add column. And this time I'll select person in the create a column menu. And then I'll click next. And this column is going to be used to store that email address that we were asking our respondents to provide in the MS form response. Now you can see here, I filled out the create a column menu. And again, the type is person or group. And in this case, I am not going to allow the selection of groups because we want to ensure that at any point in time, this column only features one individual. Next, I'll click save. And you can see here our column was added. Now, if you're finding this video helpful, you may also want to download my free PDF guide that outlines three SharePoint tips to improve your productivity. I've included a link to that guide in the description below, or you can just bookmark that card in the upper right hand corner of your screen and download that after you finish watching this video. All right, now I have also added another person type column called requester, and this is so that we can pass in the email address of the individual who submitted the Microsoft form response. Now I've gone ahead and filled out the new item form for demonstration purposes. Now what I wanna draw your attention to is the attachments field. Now with SharePoint list items, you don't explicitly need to add an attachment field. You just have the ability to add attachments to these items. And that is where we are going to pass in the attachments that are added to our Microsoft form response and they will show up here on the SharePoint list item. Now I'll go ahead and click save. And we can see here a sample of what we would expect to see after we build out our workflow and we pass in those MS form responses to our list. All right, now the next thing that we need to do is start to build out our Power Automate workflow. You can see here I'm on the Power Automate landing page. And from here, I will click on the create button and then I will select automated cloud flow. Next, you'll want to give your flow a name, and then you'll want to go ahead and search for your trigger. Now, I will select this first option here when a new response is submitted, and if this is not displayed in the recommended triggers for you, you just want to go ahead and search for this option here. Next, I'll click Create, and you can see here that our workflow is created and that our trigger has been added to the workflow canvas. Now, the next thing we'll need to do is select the form ID. Now, I will click into the drop down, and this is going to display a list of Microsoft Forms that you have access to. Now, I'll go ahead and search for the form that we created earlier in the tutorial, and you can see here I've selected my form. All right, now the next thing that you'll need to do is click on New Step, and you want to search for the Get Response Details action. Now you can see here, get response details, Microsoft Forms, you wanna select this. And what this is going to allow us to do is to actually access the response details from the form that triggered this workflow. Now within this action, you will need to select the form ID. So I will click on this dropdown and I will start to search for my project intake form that we created earlier in the tutorial. And then we'll need to pass in a response ID. Now I'll place my cursor in this field and you'll notice here that the dynamic content pane appears. And you can see here that we can pass in the response ID coming from the when a new response is submitted trigger action. So I'll go ahead and select this and you can see here that we were able to pass that in. Now, if you're finding this tutorial helpful, you might also want to check out my how to create a Microsoft Planner task when a Microsoft form response is submitted. In that tutorial, I walk through the same steps to create a Power Automate workflow where you can pass Microsoft form responses directly into a Planner task. I've included a link to that video in the description below, or you can just bookmark that card in the upper right hand corner of your screen and check it out after you finish watching this video. Next, you wanna click on new step. And this time we're going to search for the create item action. Now you can see here the SharePoint create item action. I'm gonna go ahead and select this. And the first thing we'll need to do here is to specify the SharePoint online site that is hosting our list. Now I'll place my cursor in the site address and I will search for Project Neptune. You can see here that's displayed, I'll select it. And then you need to select the actual list itself and I'll place my cursor in the list field and you can see here that 
SharePoint list that we created earlier in the tutorial. I'll go ahead and select it. And you can see here now that the create item workflow action expands. Now, the next thing that we'll need to do is to map our MS form response values to the corresponding columns in our SharePoint list. Now I will demonstrate this for one column and then I'll go ahead and just fill this out given that the steps are the same. Now I'll start off with this first field called title. Now I'll place my cursor in this field and what you can see here is that the dynamic content pane is going to display and we can access all of the different questions from our MS forms and it is going to be listed under the get response details action. Now I'll go ahead and select this question. What is the name of your idea? And you can see here that it appears as a data card in this field. So we've now mapped one of our MS form responses to the SharePoint list column that we want that data to be populated in. Now you can see here that I've gone ahead and I have mapped all of my MS form responses to my columns. And so that is how we will create our item and then pass in the MS form response values. All right, now the next thing that we need to do is add and apply to each control. Now I'll go ahead and click on new step and I will search for apply to each. I'll go ahead and select this here. And next you wanna click on add an action and you want to search for the get file content OneDrive for business action. Now I'll go ahead and select it here. Now, if you're wondering why we're using the Microsoft OneDrive get file content workflow action, I do have another tutorial that explains where Microsoft form response attachments are stored. I've included a link to that video in the description below, or you can just bookmark that card in the upper right-hand corner of your screen and check it out after you finish watching this video. Now, before I carry on with the tutorial, I'm just going to fast forward and explain something that I'm going to be showing you in a second. Now, what I've done here is I've created another flow that does the same thing, and what I've done is I've added an additional multi-line text column to my list. You can see here that's called display output of MS form attachments. And I'm going to insert the attachment question from our survey here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and run this. All right, now you can see here that I've switched back to my SharePoint list and I've executed that modified workflow. I'm just gonna bring up the item menu here and you can see here this additional multi-line text field called display output of MS form attachments. I'm gonna go ahead and click on see more and I'll edit this. Now, what you can see here is that this attachment question from our MS form has provided a string value that actually contains properties of the files that were attached to the MS form response. Now I'm gonna call your attention to a few fields. You can see here there's a property called name and you can also see here there's a property called link and you can see here that there are additional properties such as reference ID and each of these is followed by the actual value. Now what this is is this is a string value that is returned when you try to use the get response details Microsoft form workflow action in Power Automate. And so what I'm going to be using is an expression to take this and convert this into JSON. And then we're going to be using the item expression so that we can access specific properties or attributes that we'll need to pipe into our workflow. And specifically, we're going to need the name of the file so that we can pass that into our SharePoint list. Now, in order to convert this string, you want to place your cursor in the select and output from previous steps field. And in the dynamic content pane, you wanna click on the expression tab. Now, what you want to do next is type JSON in the expression field, and then you want to place an open bracket. And you can see here that this expression takes a string. So what we're going to do next is click back on the dynamic content tab, and we are going to search for and select our attachment question from our Microsoft form. So I'll scroll down here and I will select my attachment question. And then you wanna go ahead and click OK. And you can see here that our expression was added. Next, we need to insert the unique identifier of the file. Now to do this, you wanna place your cursor in the file 
field of the get file content action. And then you wanna click on the expression tab again. And this time you want to use the item expression. So you can see here I've typed item and then I just press tab. It added an open and close bracket. Next you wanna place a question mark after the closed bracket and you want to place a pair of square brackets with open quotation marks and we are going to use the id value next you want to go ahead and click ok and you can see here that we've created an expression that will pass in the unique identifier for each file that we need to retrieve and attach to our list now the next thing that we need to do is actually create an action to take the attachments and append them to the item that we're creating earlier in our workflow. To do this, you wanna click add an action. And again, we want to do this inside the apply to each container. And here you wanna search for add attachment and you wanna select the add attachment action and then we need to fill out this action card. So the first thing we need to do is select the site address, that is our SharePoint site. Then we need to select the list name. Now you can see here I've populated those two fields. The next thing that we need to do is retrieve the ID of the item that we want to attach the files to. Now to do this, you want to place your cursor in this field. And we want to use the ID value from the create item workflow and then the next thing that we need to do is populate the file name and file content fields. Now to get the file name, you wanna place your cursor in this file name field. And again, we're going to use an expression. So you wanna click on the expression tab. And this time we're going to use the item expression. So you wanna start typing item and then you can just press tab. Next, you wanna place a question mark after the item expression. And then you want to use a set of open brackets with single quotation marks and this time we're going to input the value name you want to go ahead and click ok and then you want to place your cursor in the file content field and we can simply go into the dynamic content menu and select this file content value from the get file content action so i'll go ahead and select this and you can see here that we've populated all of the fields on the add attachment workflow action next i'll go ahead and click save you can see here that the flow is saved and there were no errors. And this concludes development of the workflow. So next we're gonna go ahead and test this out and actually see how it works. All right, now you can see here that I've brought up my MS form and I also have my SharePoint list next to it. Now I've gone ahead and I filled out my MS form. Now very quickly before I submit this, you can see here I've included two attachments. These are simple MS Word documents. I've uploaded these to the form. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click submit and I want you to pay attention to the SharePoint list on the left-hand side of your screen. You can see here that our new SharePoint list item was added and all of the columns match the values that were input on the MS form. Now if I quickly click into this item here and scroll down, you can also see that our two attachments were actually added to this SharePoint list item. And just for demonstration purposes, I'll go ahead and click on one of these. And you can see here that the file opens up. In this case, there was no content. Now, one way that you can enhance this solution is by adding email notifications to your workflow. Now, I do have an in-depth tutorial that walks you through the steps to create those email notifications. And in this video, I'll even show you how you can pipe in content from your SharePoint list items directly in the body of the email. I've included a link to that video in the description below, or you can just click that card in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. I'm Louis Acabellis. Thanks for stopping by and see you in the next video.